it's hard for people who didn't live through World War II to understand America's commitment to winning that war. Every person played a part in the war effort. Many women did their part by working in war industries, others by serving in the Women's Army Corps, or WACs. Join the WAC, take a crack at the axis. Uncle Sam needs your help right away. On the ground, in the air, serve your country everywhere. Join the Women's Army Corps today. In 1942, shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the city of Daytona Beach's economy was in a deep slump. Once bustling hotels and restaurants were empty at what had been the busy season. German U-boats were prowling the coast, sinking Allied ships. There was a blackout on businesses and homes along the beach, and food and gasoline were being rationed. The outlook was bleak. Then relief came from an unexpected source, the Women's Army Corps. In late 1942, the War Department established a training center for the WACs in Daytona Beach. Mary McLeod Bethune, founder of Bethune-Cookman University, used her influence with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt to get the base here. It wasn't long before the WACs began arriving, but the city wasn't ready. The War Department hadn't built facilities for the women, so they were housed in local hotels. The Claridon, the Princess Icena, and the Streamline, along with Halifax Hospital, became barracks for the women. Daytona suddenly found itself host to as many as 14,000 WACs at a time. The hotels were unable to keep up with the demand for housing, so a 6,000 women tent camp was built on Bethune Point, at the south end of Beach Street. But Tent City, as it was called, was only a temporary solution. It was hot in the summer, cold in the winter, muddy and mosquito infested. A permanent training facility, or cantonment as it was called, was built west of Daytona Beach in the Welch area, site of Daytona State College today. It included Halifax Hospital and had mess halls, barracks, a theater, PX, and parade fields. In addition to the thousands of wax, or soldiers in skirts as they were called, Daytona Beach soon became the home of thousands of sailors. The Navy budgeted $10 million to convert the Daytona Beach and to land airports into naval air stations. They were used to train Navy pilots. So in less than a year, Daytona Beach had gone from a town with a struggling economy to a bustling town. The hotels were full and the restaurants were busy. Business was good and there were lots of jobs supporting the WAX and Navy. The town was crowded with servicemen and women. At the peak period in 1943, there were some 14,000 WACs in Daytona Beach, which had a normal population of a little over 30,000. They could be seen marching on the beach, and there were regular sunset graduation ceremonies at the bandshell. The WACs remained in Daytona until March of 1944, when the cantonment closed. In June of that year, the former WAC base and the Halifax Hospital became the Welch Convalescent Center, which treated wounded servicemen returning home. The WACs were in Daytona for only two years, but it was enough to turn the town's economy around. Many of them had happy memories of Daytona Beach and moved here after the war. Others vacationed here or even retired here. Whichever, the WACs have had a lasting effect on Daytona Beach.